Happy fall. Hey everybody. It's been it's been a little while since I've been on here <clears throat> talking about things that I love with you. Um, but I was inspired today to go back through my videos and read all of your lovely, super heartfelt comments. And thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing so much love here and for seeing me and hearing me, hearing my message. It just brings me so much love. I Thank you. And if you ever feel called to connect with me more, um, please do so. I love getting emails from you guys and messages on Instagram, comments here. Um, if you want to stay in touch or if you want to get to <clears throat> get to know more about what I do, you can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. My Instagram handle is Amber Brown Short, or you can check out my website, which is Amber Brown Short. And um, those are probably the easiest ways to get in touch with me or to see what I'm up to. Um, I am currently on my way to <laughs> childbirth here in a couple weeks, if not sooner. I'm expecting my second daughter. And um, yeah, but I wanted to talk to you today about Mary Magdalene, who is a dear um, guide for me. And I really felt called, I've been feeling called for a while to share everything that I know about her and, and really all just the message that I believe, uh, I've been, I've received to share with the world of what I believe her message to be. Short disclosure, I'm not, uh, a religious person. I am not an, you know, educated and in, indoctrined minister or anything like that. This is all just my personal research, my personal experience and what I believe to be true. Uh, and if this doesn't resonate with you, I highly encourage you to continue to do your own research and to see what feels most true to you and your heart and your soul. So Mary Magdalene, uh, I'm, I'm not going off any notes or anything. So if I've left anything out, I apologize in advance and I'll just put those in the, in the notes <clears throat> below if I did miss anything important, but I was, and for anyone who, um, this may, you, you may relate to this part. You may not, that's okay. But I was raised very religious, very, uh, conservative Christian and, uh, my, my, my grandfather <clears throat> was a minister, Presbyterian minister. So my mom is a minister's daughter and my dad has just always been pretty, you know, religious, I would say. But, um, I was raised Baptist slash Methodist. And so I was raised to believe that Mary Magdalene was a follower of Jesus and that she was a prostitute that Jesus forgave. So she dedicated her life to him. Um, I reconnected with her. You can hear more about my Mary Magdalene story in another, there's another video on this channel that you can go listen to that if you want. But I did reconnect with her in the past, I don't know, three, no, probably like two and a half years or so. I have reconnected with her. My life has drastically changed since then, which I also share more about in my, in my Mary Magdalene story. But what I've learned about her, I've dived so deep because I just want to know the truth. And I feel like the truth is coming out now that what we did, what we thought we knew about Mary Magdalene is not the truth. And her truth is coming out now, which I think is such a beautiful thing that we all get to experience. And so many people did, were raised to believe that Mary, Mary Magdalene was a prostitute and that she, um, you know, was forgiven by Jesus. That is in, not true. The reason why a lot of people think that is because uh, there was a Pope, one of the first few Popes of the Catholic religion, I believe it was Pope Gregory the first. I could be incorrect about that, but Pope, one of the, yeah, anyways, um, one of the first few Popes back in the early, I think third century or so, or 300, 
something AD, he made a, a, a statement saying that he believed that one of the many mentioned Marys in the Bible was that who, there's a, there's a Mary mentioned in the Bible who was loved often <clears throat> and was forgiven by Jesus. And he made the statement that that was the same Mary, which is Mary Magdalene. I will say that as of now, the Catholic religion has, has made, within the past, I think like seven or eight years, back in 2006, 14 or 16, I want to say, the Catholic religion <clears throat> publicly announced that they recognized that they were wrong about making that assumption and that that's where that belief came from. So they actually made a feast day for Mary Magdalene, which is on July 22nd, as an apology, if you will, or an honoring of her. So that's pretty, pretty wild and pretty cool that they like did, they re really recognized their mistake in that way. Uh, so that's where that comes from. I personally believe that this is part of the patriarchy. <laughs> is, uh, you know, labeling Mary Magdalene as a prostitute. Um, I, I, you know, when, when Jesus was crucified, there was actually many forms of Christianity. It wasn't just this like overarching, you know, uh, one religion, kind of like what we have to, I mean, I know there's different strings of it, but it, it is kind of an overarching one belief that we have today. And back then, there were many different beliefs and many different uh, offshoots of the teachings of Jesus. And it wasn't until the, I, I believe it was some somewhere around this, yeah, the three, around that same time, three three hundreds after uh, Jesus was crucified, the king of Rome, what was his name? Um... Constantine, or the, yeah, he was the Roman emperor, decided that he wanted there to just be one Christianity. So they had a meeting called the Council of Nicaea, and the Council of Nicaea literally decided what Christianity was going to be, and what was going to be in the Bible. And so they destroyed many gospels that they didn't want to have in the Bible which are called the Gnostic Gospels. Gnostic is G-N-O-S-T-I-C. They're very, very interesting and very beautiful pieces of content. I highly recommend looking them up and looking more into those. But the Gospel of Mary is one of those in the Gnostic Gospels. Her, she's actually to this day the only woman who has a gospel. And in her, in, in her gospel, it, 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 unfortunately it was destroyed many times. So they, we don't have the full gospel as of even today. We only have bits and pieces of it. Excuse me. But so they're, they, the reason why they got rid of them is because they didn't want people to see that women were equal uh, because they didn't want women to hold a place of power in the church and like multitude of different reasons. So there was, you know, mul multiple gospels that talked about Jesus and Mary Magdalene's relationship and that Jesus loved her the most, that he often kissed her on the mouth, which I think was in the gospel of Thomas who talked about that. So that's, that's why they got rid of these. That was one of the reasons why they got rid of these, these, these gospels. And so this really, in my opinion, is where the patriarchy began is where they took the power that existed of femininity and erased it from the Bible. So that's, that's really the beginning. Um, and then, you know, I think it was, yeah, a few hundred years later, I think, I, I know I'm not, don't quote me on these years, everybody. I'm pro I know I'm not absolutely correct on these, but was when Pope Gregory made the assumption about Mary Magdalene being the prostitute and her reputation just continued on. Um, Mary Magdalene, what I believe, now I will say that evidence-wise, we really don't have a whole lot about Mary Magdalene. We have her gospel, we have other people's gospels, but we don't have 
a whole lot of evidence that describes the truth about her and her relationship with Jesus, her life really. We don't, we just don't know a whole lot. There are many, many, many people in the world, myself included, who have a strong connection with her. And there's some really powerful channeled messages from her. One of my favorites is the book called The Magdalene Manuscript. It's a channeled message through um, a couple and oh, they did such a great job. I feel like it's just every word I read, I was like, I feel like this is the truth. And a lot of that story is what I believe to be true, which I'll share now. Um, if you want something a little bit more practical and evidence-based about Mary Magdalene, I highly recommend reading uh, Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Watterson. She is a, um, I believe she has a doc doctorate uh, from Harvard, uh, Harvard Divinity School, and she has, she goes, she really sticks to the evidence-based stuff about what we do know about Mary Magdalene. So those are just two resources that I have to offer you. But what I personally believe is that Mary Magdalene, um, I'm, I don't, I don't know much about her, or although I wish I did, knew much about her early childhood and her early life. Uh, many women in this area, in this time timeline, um, thought of or were referred to by their name and their father's name. But Mary Magdalene was not. She was referred to by her name and where she came from. Mary of Magdala is where she came from. So it's interesting why she's not referred to with her father. A lot of people think that maybe she um, was an orphan or there's a lot of ideas out there that's swimming around about why she maybe isn't associated with her father. But that's an interesting thing. A lot of people believe that she had a lot of money, that she had a lot of resources financially, which is which is another reason why she was a follower of Jesus was to provide financial resources to them. I personally believe that she was a follower of Isis, which is not uncommon in that time period because Isis in this area in Egypt, this is where they all lived in Egypt. Isis is one of the, uh, the, uh, the, god, the goddesses of all the gods and goddesses that were worshipped in Egypt during that time. So it's not uncommon that many women would worship Isis as the, you know, mother god, if you will. So I believe that she was a follower of Isis and that she was a high priestess in the temples that worshipped them. And I do believe that she was a practicer of, uh, um, an initiate of magic. She, in the, in the Magdalene manuscript, she says that she was trained in sex magic and that she and Jesus engaged in sex magic together, which essentially comes from the idea from the Kundalini practice of, in a short sense, I won't get, get into this, but it's in a short sense, raising our vibration through our chakras during sexual acts, whether it's with ourselves or, or with somebody else. And I personally believe that to be true. I believe that she, um, that she and Mother Mary were in this Isis training. They, she calls it the Isis cult, but you know, that word has a lot of charge to it. So I don't use that word so much, but in this Isis, Isis group, I believe that she and Mother Mary had a connection through that, through there. And that when she and Jesus met and they began practicing magic together, that's why Jesus was able to do many of the miracles that he was able to do and fulfill his prophecy of really just radically changing the world while he was here. So I absolutely believe that to be true. I do believe that she needed to keep her truth secret and her relationship with Jesus secret because there was not a lot of equality of between men and women back then and you know with the um with the with jesus being crucified that if they had known 
that he and Mary Magdalene were together, that Mary Magdalene absolutely would have also been crucified. So that's what I believe to be true. Um, I also believe that after Jesus was crucified, that Mary was, Mary was pregnant with a daughter named Sarah, and that she and uh, a few other women went to the south of France after Jesus was crucified and fulfilled their teachings there. And there's some confusion about who, um, who those women could be. I believe that, um, I believe that Mother Mary was one of them. And I, there was another Mary who I'm not quite sure exactly who that could be. I, I believe maybe a relative of one of the two. I think maybe Mother Mary, one, one of those relatives. Uh, another Mary was a really common name back then. And, you know, the south of France, uh, they, I believe they did a lot of their teachings. And, and this, this is true even to this day in the south of France. If you go there, there's many many people who worship Mary Magdalene, they worship Sarah, her daughter, uh, many pieces of clues or evidence, if you will, that they were living in this area for a while. I personally believe that this is where the Cathars were born, is, is the south of France, where they were doing their where they were doing their teachings because the Cathars, you know, a lot of what they believed in was worshiping the feminine in the Bible. And, um, you know, a lot of things that, that were in alignment with what Mary Magdalene taught. And of, I'll, I'll go into what she taught now. And this is in her gospel. It's in her gospel. It's also comes from many channeled messages from her, from different people. There's like this common theme of what her teachings are in terms of um, the medicine that we have to receive from her. So what I believe that that is, is coming from the heart. Mary talks a lot in her gospel about coming from the heart and living connected to our soul. She talks about the seven powers, which I believe could be an offshoot or connected to the seven deadly sins. Uh, I believe that it's just seven different layers of our ego that when we shed away these layers of our ego, that we come into our heart. And, you know, and, and, um, I personally believe like the way that I've incorporated that into my personal life is how can I recognize the parts of myself that are human and honor them like my anger, my ignorance. These are just things for me. Um, all, I mean, all, we all, we all have them. We all are human. We all have layers of ourselves that either don't serve us or other people or that we don't like or whatever it is and it's what makes us human and so we get to embrace those and when we embrace them we shed them so i i believe that that's um that that's what that's one of the major lessons that i have to learn from mary magdalene is is when i embrace the parts of me that are so human <laughs> that are sometimes uncomfortable to experience that I can shed them and let them go. And when I do that, I, I'm able to tap more deeply into my heart space, whether that's, um, in intimacy with somebody else, when I'm in a relationship with somebody else through vulnerability, through sharing what's really coming up for me, even when it's really scary or when it's really hard. It's having compassion and empathy for people who trigger me, <laughs> people who make me feel really angry or not good. <laughs> it's I am coming from the heart when I can when I can experience my feelings about it and understand that they are human and they are coming from their humanness. Another thing that Mary Magdalene and this comes probably more from the sex magic piece is that is especially as women, since I think a lot of us women, society-wise, worldly-wise, and maybe personally, which 
through trauma or whatever to, um, that we don't, we tend to not be in our power sexually or that we do not use our sensuality as our power, which I have come to learn is such a potent piece of what we have to offer this world in a really positively powerful way. And one really obvious example of that is chi children. That when we experience our sexuality, in, and I mean, we can get pregnant at any time, but especially in intimacy with somebody else, we can create such significantly powerful things like a child. And childbirth, as we all know, is one of the biggest miracles on earth. So I've come to learn that, that it's in through manifestation practices, through self-love practices, that when I embrace my sensuality and my sexuality, it's incredibly healing for me and for the world. In, in an empowered way, obviously, I know that there's a line of how that, that it could be um, disempowering for us. I'm trying to think. Yeah, and, and you know, divine, another thing, a, a big lesson through Mary's message that I've received is divine partnership and being in a divine union with somebody, which is has a lot of layers to it, but in a short sense, what I want to communicate is how to be in intimacy with somebody in a in a completely open way, but also how to how to really like honor somebody and let myself be honored. And that's one of the things that was talked about in the Magdalene manuscript that I really appreciate with the sex magic is that sex magic actually cannot happen unless there that honoring is happening. Whether, especially if the female is feeling like she's, I know that not all relationships are male, female, but especially if, I'll say both parties, both parties are feeling honored. And I think that that is such a huge piece before anything can really begin magic wise. And just in general <laughs> is that it's so important to feel honored in the relationship. And the way that we do that is by honoring. And we, we, when we honor our partner, we create, we create that context for us to be honored. <sighs> I think that's all I wanted to share today about Mary Magdalene and her message and just a little bit about how it's affected me in my life and how I incorporate it into my life but if you know me you know I love talking about her and her message um, and I hope you enjoy this message if you do please comment please tell me please feel free to reach out or connect with me more as you know, I'm about to deliver a baby soon <laughs> and I'll be taking some time away work-wise, uh, creation-wise after I have this baby. And I am excited to come back because I have lots of ideas and lots of plans as far as what I'll be bringing into the world when I'm ready to come back, especially for moms. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys have a lovely week.